Space, the endless freeway. These are the voyages of the starship Surprise, its several year mission to seek out new forms of profit and commerce and to bodily go where no man has gone before. This is Star Trek with Captain Jerk, Shh. Mr. Spark, Shh. out. Sorry. Dr. McToy, Lieutenant Lasso and his horse, MX, <laughs> Lieutenant Pot, Lieutenant Kickoff, and Lieutenant You Herder. Today's episode, Sadamit. Captain's Log, Stardate, day after yesterday, three days ago tomorrow. I was enjoying a meal in the mess hall with Lieutenant Pot. Waiter, Waiter Nixon, you gave me the wrong portion. I want it big. Pardon me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that sure looks good, Potty. Man, you're telling me I didn't think that after all these years I could still get the munchies. Damn it, Pot! Sir, man? Nothing. I just have to do that once in a while. Oh, well, don't go off and start quoting from the Bill of Rights or something. Man. Don't tempt me. So, <clears throat> Captain Man, what's this directive I got today from Private Baker? Right. About cutting back my engine room personnel. Right. Uh, what? There's rumors of four of war afoot, sir. Man, why wasn't I informed? What the? Oh, oh, oh. What the hell? We're skidding, man. Beep, 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 beep. The pink alert. Beep, beep. Quick, to beep, the bridge. Beep. Meanwhile, aboard the bridge. Launch the dissolvent, Lieutenant Kickoff. Dissolvent away, sir. <laughs> Where has this oil slick originated, Lasso? The planet Gulf, sir. It's that sad damn fella again. Please save your editorials for the end of the show, Lieutenant. Spark! <laughs> ah! Christ on a crutch. What in the name of all that's blessed is going on here? We've hit an oil slip, Captain. And we're skidding out of control. Desolvent has been launched. Its effect? Well, it's slowly breaking up the oil, sir. Origin? The planet Gulf, sir. Potty, get me more power! Well, you're already captain of the ship now, man. From the engines! Hey, it worked! Let's celebrate with some children. Lasso, set a course for the planet. You heard her. Get Starfleet Command Corporation on the blower. Toying in, Captain Jake. Jerk here. Jerk, what in blazes is going on up there? The dead and maimed are piling up like midterm exams down here. We're out of it, McToy. Don't inform me about your mental problems, damn it. I'm doing a full-scale life rejuvenation experiment down here. I must have calm. I'm going to create life. Do you hear? Life! Huh? Jerk out. What did you say? Right. You heard him, you heard her. What did she say? Nothing. I did so say something. What did you say, Captain? You heard me. What did he say? You heard her. You heard him. I will not play straight men to a string of humorless passages. I'm a science officer. I'm a volcanoian. I am not... Emotional. Stay frosty, stay. Frosty spark. <laughs> ah! Sorry, sir, I have no control over that particular function. Well, see that it doesn't happen again. Yes, sir. Starfleet Command Corporation President Bush on the blower, Jerk. Jerk, Beep. report. Beep. We hit an oil slick, sir. Beep. Source, the planet Gulf. Beep. Damn. No su- Beep. Damn. Beep. Trouble with the Gulf War, sir? The war's over. You heard it here. From these lips, no more war. It's this whole environmental thing now. Beep. Jerk, beam down immediately and dispatch Saddam. Get that Beep. weasel out of my hair. But, sir, Beep. surely you must have realized that turning on all his wells would have been a first step. Sure, sure I did. But we won, didn't we? America, er, Starfleet has stood fast. Democracy has returned. The planet Kuwait is free once more. Still can't buy a free press newspaper there. What was that? Uh, nothing, sir. Jerk out. Click. Cool it, pot. You never know when the drug war will intensify. Oh, well, man, you're right. First officer, you and Lasso and an army of expendables meet me in the transporter place. Yahoo! Shall I bring MX? <laughs> Negative. This is a ground mission. <laughs> Shoot. Maybe next time, partner. May I go, Captain? There might be children down there. No. You take the con. As you wish, sir. Later, in the transporter place... Damn. Damn. I don't want to go to the planet. 
It always spells death for us guys in the red shirts. Stop belly aching. I'm a mother of three and I'm here. Yeah, sure. You join to get away from those kids. All set, man, sir. Beam us down, pot. On the planet Gulf, near the city of Persia. Ah. Spark! No! Oh. Sorry, sir. Where is a damn? Tricorder readings indicate he is standing 6.7 meters directly in front of us. All right, let's nuke the bastard. Uh, just one moment, Starship Captain. We are a sovereign planet. You have no right to invade our soil. Besides, your ambassador said I could do anything I wanted to with the planet Kuwait. Save it, sir. Damn. Get down on your knees and snivel like an oil baron. Precisely. Is it because I began to accumulate large amounts of wealth that you decided to exterminate me? <laughs> your wealth, sir, upsets the entire profit margin of the galaxy. You are a butcher and a thief. And yet, so are you. Well, shoot, so we are. But we're Americans. <laughs> Set razors on kill. Fire! Yeah! He fried up good, didn't he? Some of our men have died, Captain. Well, they were wearing the red shirts, weren't they? Jerk to transporter place. Our mission is accomplished here. Beam us back up. This was Star Trek, starring the voices of Emily Young, David Williams, and Rod Harrell, and Chris Porter. Produced and engineered by Joe Bohorfish. Written and directed by Marshall Northrop. Space, the endless freeway. These are the voyages of the starship Surprise, its several year mission to seek out new forms of profit and commerce, and to bodily go where no man has gone before. This is Star Trek with Captain Jerk, <whistles> Mr. Spark, <whistles> ouch, sorry, Dr. McToy, <whistles> Lieutenant Lasso and his horse <whistles> MX, <whistles> Lieutenant Hawk, <Paul>, Lieutenant <whistles> Kickoff, and <whistles> Lieutenant You Heard Her. <whistles> Today's episode, The Deadly Fear. Captain's log. I'm worried. Ever since a landing party consisting of myself, Mr. Spark... <laughs> Sorry. Lieutenant Lasso, his horse MX, and Dr. McToy visited the planet Interruptus Coitus II for routine exploration. We have shown a marked decrease in sexual desire. All except MX, that is, who continues to stud with great abandon. Repeatedly he has confronted me in the corridor, mocking me with his tales of conquest. Well, the show's three main studs are out, and the women are flocking to my door. <laughs> in Sickly Bay, Captain Jerk joins a glum Mr. Spark. <laughs> Ow! Sorry. And Lieutenant Lasso, as Dr. McToy works feverishly to discover the reason behind their diminished urges. Have you found out what's wrong, Doctor? I'm waiting for Nurse Chattel to bring me the findings. Here are the results, Master. Damn it! What is it, Skeleton? We're impotent, Jim, and there's nothing I can do. Somehow I knew you were going to say that. You mean to say I'm going to have to sit idly by while that horse studs the whole ship? Shut up in there! So it would appear. I'm gonna kill the bastard! Jim! Neck pinch, mister! Uh, uh, neck pinch you! Oh, spark! Uh, sorry. I don't understand. It has never failed me before. Save the self-examination for later. Let's go get him before he hurts MX! 
in the stables, Captain Jerk finds MX in a corner. Oh, another one. MX! Wilbur? <laughs> Emmett! Don't hurt him, you varmint! Wait a moment, wait a moment, Jim. He wasn't with another woman. He was masturbating. Fascinating, Captain. I believe we are witnessing a classic example of the clockwork orange principle. I wonder if, if we can masturbate too. Oh, it's no use. We're as limp as elephant trunks. Nevertheless, I don't understand how MX can do it. Perhaps if I created a horse instead of a man. Yes. Bring to life from the dead a horse. I shall create life. Do you hear? Cut it yeah. out, McToy! Maybe it's the oat bran I've been feeding him. Oh, it's the right thing to do. This is illogical. A man cannot suddenly become impotent. What are you complaining about? You only get it once every seven years. I'm giving up a ten-time-a-day lifestyle. But that's just it, Captain. I am more repressed than you humans are. If I am impotent, I will go stark, raving mad. Think, First Officer, think. Who could be behind all of this? Who? I do not know. Sp First Officer, I want you to check out this quadrant's history for comets or radiation which could account for this phenomenon. Click. Jerk to bridge. Lieutenant Kickoff? Yes, sir? Plot a course back to interrupt this coitus, too. Mm, may I go to the surface this time, sir? No! Click. Jerk to engineering. Potty, give me all the speed you have. Hey, man, I paid good money for that stuff. From the engines. Oh, click. McToy, come with me. To the bridge, gentlemen. I want answers. You heard her. Oh, no, no, I didn't. What'd she say? Not you. I'm talking to... Never mind. You heard her. Open a hailing frequency. I want to talk to Sexual Dysfunction Lab on Starpay 69. Open it yourself, jerk. What? You heard me. This is a court-martial offense, Lieutenant. I'd tell you to go do something with yourself, but I know you can't anymore. Oh, where's my razor? I'm going to fry her. <laughs> <laughs> it's not working. Maybe some children have been playing with it. Jerk, all things phallic are now useless. Your greatest fear has come true. No pun intended. It never occurred to me that the women could be behind this. Although the implications of this event are horrendous, the accomplishment itself must be viewed with great admiration. It's Diefleet Command, Corporation President Bush on the blower, jerk. Jerk? Report? You... Why aren't any of my missiles working? I've got reports here that the problem has originated in your sector. Even Barr is complaining. I have everything under control, sir. Well, get on it. Unequivocally. Hurry. I'm nothing without my missiles. My capacity to destroy sovereign nations is impaired. My systems yes, are sir. down. Y yes, sir. Click. I have faith in you, Jim. Well, I don't. You pointed it open circuit. We have you to thank for this, Captain Asshole. If you hadn't gone around using the cosmos as some sort of giant in a galactic bedroom, none of this would have happened. Yeah, you're right, Doctor. <laughs> He's a jerk. It can't be as simple as all that. Don't I get us out of danger week after week? I give my all to make sure my ship, my crew are safe. It's my ship. I love her. I breathe her. She's in my every waking thought. She haunts my every dream. But she's only a ship. I give. She takes. Is it so terrible that I seek to quench my manly desires through women? All women? Every woman. Well, without regards to race, creed, religion, planetary origin, we, the people of the United States of America, in order to form a more perfect union, ensure domestic tranquility, e plavnista, four scores... Jim! So Jim! Uh, 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 uh. That's it! Spark! Ah! Sorry. You heard her! I Did said I was sorry. Oh, no, I'm talking to you, heard her. Jeez. Lieutenant, you're a sexual creature just like us, right? Yeah, so? <laughs> then, with all men impotent, where are you going to get any? <laughs> Without us, you'll have to resort to lesbianism. Touché, Captain. Oh, for crying out loud, not that hoary old cliché. <laughs> Listen, Jake, we women got along pretty well before you, and I'm sure we'll do just fine without you. All right then, Missy. How do you explain my horse? Read Nancy Friday. Oh, shoot, what about Zane Gray? 
there is one thing. Yes? yes. Jerk, you said you'd give it all to save your crew? Yes. Then there is one thing you can do to save mankind. Oh, what is it? Castration. Well, if that don't beat all, get out. But there must be some other way. Impetacy for all men. Jim, I'm a mad scientist, not a doctor. But is it too much to ask for all of mankind? <laughs> Captain's log, supplemental. By submitting to castration, I can save mankind from an eternity of impotency. I'll be martyred, lauded, and go down in history as a savior. My answer was obvious. <laughs> no way! Oh, Hold it! Damn it! Oh, Run it now! Run it now! Get it out! That's right! No, get, get my axe! Wait a second. What? Hold it! Well, uh... Look at yourselves. What a pathetic bunch. You chop the jake to bits just so you can get a lay. It's sad, really. Grown men acting like they stepped out of a bud commercial or something. Listen, do yourselves a favor. <laughs> Think about what you've done. Learn from it. Whoa, Nelly! My pants are too tight! I'm a man again! Where's MX? I'm gonna go riding! <laughs> yeah! This was Star Trek, starring the voices of Eileen Dover, David Williams, Rod Harrell, and Throat Wobbler Mangrove, with special assistance from Lagbolt Stegpooch. Produced and engineered by Joe Zod, written and directed by Marshall Northrup. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Joe Yeah, happy birthday to you. And many Marxist. Space, the endless freeway. These are the voyages of the starship Surprise. Captain it's Man, um... What? What is it, Lieutenant Pot? Uh, can I do the opening, man? I, like, always wanted to. Well, sure, I guess so. All right, we're gonna do it right, man. Hit it, dude. These are the voyages of my beautiful ship, the Surprise, man. It's several your mission to do a lot of stuff in uh, a short amount of time. Like, man, and oh, yeah, to go bodily against the wall or something. This is Star Trek with Captain Jerk, Mr. Spark, Shh. Oh. Shh. Sorry. Dr. McToy, Shh. Lieutenant Lasso and his horse, MX, Shh. Lieutenant Pot, Shh. Lieutenant Kickoff, Shh. and Lieutenant You Heard Her. Shh. Today's episode, Gilligan. Skipper! Skipper! What is it, little buddy? <laughs> look, Skipper, look! Up in the sky! What? It looks like a meteor or something! Professor! 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 What is it, Skipper? Look, Professor, what do you make of that? Why, it looks like a piece of discombobulated anthrax which has reticulated into a cosmic conundrum and is about to crash into the lagoon. Look out! That's an anthrax? No, I must have been mistaken, for it seems to be a vehicle which can propel itself through space. What do you say, Skipper? It's a spaceship, Gilligan. A spaceship? I better go tell the others. Mr. and Mrs. Howell! Mr. and Mrs. Howell! Not now, Gilligan. Mrs. Howell and I were just about to copulate. Oh, there's a spaceship in the lagoon. Oh, very well. Lovey. Uh, please be more careful when you decopulate, Thurston. Oh, sorry. Marianne, Ginger! Marianne! Ginger! What is it, Gilligan? Did you want to see my breasts? Oh, cut it out, Ginger. Girls are yucky. Then what is it, Gilligan? There's a spaceship in the lagoon. Let's go see it, Ginger. I hope there's some good-looking spacemen. It's not like anything I've ever seen before. We must remain quiet. Perhaps 
their occupants. You mean eight-legged people? Uh, what's going on? What is it? What's happening? Quiet, 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 please, quiet. Oh, oh, look, it's opening up. Damn it, Spark. <laughs> Sorry. What happened? It is safe to say that while approaching the planet Epidemiologist, we suddenly were sucked into a time warp and have landed on a deserted isle. No boat, no light, no motor car? Not a single luxury. Like Robinson Crusoe. It's as primitive as can be. My high quarter indicates seven castaways. Oh, great. Uh, that's right. We've been shipwrecked here for, for years. Well, what planet are we on now? Hello. What's your name? Ginger. Ginger. Spark. <laughs> Mommy! Will you cut that out? Sorry, sir. I'm going into the bush. You figure out what happened and fix the ship. Hi, my name is Jim Jerk, captain of the USS Surprise. Oh, la la. I'm an actress. Wait a minute. Aren't you going to rescue us? <laughs> Get a life, pal. I got more important things to do. Allow me, Skipper. Perhaps some money will change your mind. Money? Moolah, albuckles, dinero, cash. Oh, he, he doesn't seem to understand what you're saying, Mr. Howell. Heavens, a Yale man. Skipper, maybe Ginger can convince the captain in her own peculiar biological way. You know, maybe you're right, Professor. Look, they're coming back already. How familiar. Is the Shevet craft fixed, science officer? Yes, Captain. I've re-coordinated the helm, and we can safely return home to our own time. Well, baby, it was real. But I gotta be shoving off in the shove it craft. Goodbye, sailor. Listen, you castaways. Go back to enjoying not having to be involved in, uh... How, what was the name of that last war, Spark? <laughs> oh, sorry. It was the Vietnam War, Captain. Yes, of course, the Vietnam War. Vietnam? What about Chile? Iran? The, the Granada War? The, the Panama War? The, the Secret War in Nicaragua? The Persian Gulf War? We missed them all! Well then, consider yourselves lucky. Come on, Mr. First Officer. Gilligan! Gilligan, get out of my way! Oh, Professor! Little Ow, buddy! What? Little Skipper, buddy, you've done it do? again! Oh, my boy, oh. my confused boy. What? The wars aren't my fault. This was Star Trek, starring the voices of Eileen Dover, David Williams, Rod Harrell and Throat Wobbler Mangrove, with special ship crashing into the lagoon effect by Rackmount Duck Hunt, produced and engineered by Joe Zod, written and directed by Marshall Northrup, with additional overt political statements written by Byron Scott Thatcher III. Captain's Log. Stardate two weeks ago several times daily for eight hours. We were mapping stars in the Glenwood Quadrant, and Mr. Spark and I... Sorry. He and I were holding a conversation on our way to the bridge in the elevator. I don't know about you, science officer, but these last three missions have worn me out. You are suffering from what you humans call burnout? No, it's, it's not like that. It's more like a, a warm, ripe fruit. Free fall, Captain. Free fall? Stay calm, Captain. I am putting it on manual. Oh, wow. I hate that. Where do you keep finding these buttons anyway? <whistles> Jerk here. Jake, you have a priority one message from Starfleet Command Corporation. What is it, you heard her? Seems as though there's trouble on the planet media, you jerk. What was that, Lieutenant? Uh, Jake. That's better. Lieutenant Lasso, set a course for planet media. Warp 6. Whatever you say, partner. The planet media has long been buffeted by the political climate of the extreme right and left. Uh, you mean the planet media is affected by the battle between Starfleet Command Corporation and the Stick-Ons? I believe I just said that. Captain Jerk! What is it, Lieutenant Kickoff? Sensors have detected two Stick-On warships in orbit around planet media. Stick-Ons? Our arch-nemesis. <laughs> Steady, boy. Mr. Spark! 
Golly, mother of God! Sorry, sir. Gah. Sound the pink alert. Battle stations, Mr. Lasso. Yeah! Space. The endless freeway. These are the voyages of the starship Surprise, its several-year mission to seek out new forms of profit and commerce and to bodily go where no man has gone before. This is Star Trek with Captain Jerk. Mr. Spark. Ouch. Sorry. Dr. McToy, Lieutenant Lasso and his horse MX, Lieutenant Pot, Lieutenant Kickoff, and Lieutenant You Herder. Today's episode, The Trouble with Stick-On. The USS Surprise speeds toward the planet Media, where two Stick-On warships are in orbit. Lock on targets, Lieutenant Kickoff. <laughs> full ton torpedoes at full spread. I, I hope there are no children on board. <laughs> you heard her. Give me the head of Planet Media on the blower. Tying in, Jake. Executive producer Byron on the line. This is the USS Surprise to Planet Media. Captain Jerk here. Like, what's all the fuss, Captain? There are two stick-on warships orbiting your planet, babe. We are heading in to intercept. Like, stay frosty, Jerk. Stay Frosty. I have, like, the captain of the lead ship in my office. What? I believe you know uh, Captain Exer Plagarag. The varmint? Who is that jerk? Uh, nothing. Won't you join us, Captain? We are discussing new trends in broadcasting. No doubt you stick on. Yes, I am. Executive producer Byron, we will be beaming down shortly. Click. Lieutenant Lasso, disengage from pink alert. Oh, shoot! <laughs> Like. Jerk to engineering. Lieutenant Pot. Yeah, Captain, man. Meet me in the transporter place immediately. We're beaming down. Be careful, Captain. The stick-ons are notorious for molding public opinion. Yeah? Well, so are we. In fact, we do a better science officer, Spark. <laughs> oh, the Sorry, pain. sir. Take the con. I'll be back in less than four minutes. Given the time constraints placed upon our show, that would be a logical estimation. Yeah? Well, whatever. Not too much later, in the transporter place. Whoosh, whoosh. All set, Captain. Like... Very good, nameless peon. Beam us down. Whoa! Okay, Dean. Uh, whoa. Uh, wh which button do I push? I'm not sure. Not quite sure, kid, but I know I'd like to sing a song. Uh, a song? But whoa! We gotta... Whoa! We gotta beam him down. No, don't whine, my skinny friend. Huh? The women today are so beautiful. Oh, d well, oh, d don't forget to put some coins into my can, Dean. Coins? Can? It's for my kids! Coins? Can? Kids? You'll never walk alone. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my area, son. <laughs> Will you two beam us down for crying out loud? Oh, so sorry, sir. Beam! Beam! Beam us down! Okay, okay. I don't understand what the French see in here, man. Whoa, did it work? They beamed down. Whoa. I'm happy. The love of my heart burns hotly in my loins, boy. The grass of your skin melts my pocket full of coins. Meanwhile, after this long and not particularly inspired piece of exposition, hey. Captain Jerk and Lieutenant Pot find themselves face to face with stick on Captain Exer Plaragarag and his lieutenant in the offices of Planet Media's executive producer, Byron. Not bad. Great. 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 Way to go, you guys. Oh, this is Joe Zod. Joe. Ah, uh, you still have the rest of the script to do. That is correct. You clumsy Earthmen must make your foolish mistakes which will propel us to honor. For honor is everything to we stick on. Honor, yes. And the fact that our voices are so deep. You testosterone heavy villains. I know for a fact you merely want to mold the mass media to your liberalism. Well, it won't work. We are in control. We won the Gulf War. The media is on our side. Well, like, Captain, there is the matter of Starfleet Command Corporation President Bush's trip to Paris in 1980 to deal the hostages away for the election. You wouldn't dare touch that story. Well, no, we wouldn't, but, like, we're the respectable media, as you know, and it's the fringe press that, uh, the press that you should be worried about, you know. Bah! 
They barely make enough money to exist. <laughs> Yet, they still exist. We find them not worthy enough for the attempt to present a balanced side. Captain, man, did, did you ever notice how bright all the colors are when we beam down? Like... Not now, Pot. This is politics. Well, okay, I, I especially like the way the gold and the purple lights play off each other. But regardless, Sir Plagarag is right. A balanced view is no good. But why, man? Because our side is the correct way. No! Our side is! You dishonor us with your brazen attempts at comeuppance. The stick-on way is the correct way, and we intend to use the planet media to broadcast it. Wrong, pal. Starpleet's way is the best. It's mom, apple pie, and the hot chicks. It's consumption. It's corporations destroying our air. It's... Nazification! Well, no, I wouldn't put it that way. But stick on. Let me assure you that we will use the planet media our way. Hey, like, you know, I'm flexible, guys. Why is everyone so intense, man? What about the grain? The grain? Yeah, man, the quadrotrilis D or whatever. Yeah, there is something familiar about that. Man, I just thought this was the episode satirizing the trouble with tribbles. Damn it, this is war, Pot. We can't let these leftist scums to take over planet media. Nor you righteous jerks. Don't make fun of my ancestry. Here, man, I packed it with snow. Have a smoke, Captain. What? Come on, you two extra plicker stick on guy. Have a smoke. I don't know. I just have to think like that once in a while. Perhaps someday, in a different time and on a different show, we could become friends as long as it doesn't dishonor us. <coughs> right. Man, don't you wish this could really happen? When it's gone, we're turning into a real police state. This was Star Trek, starring the voices of Emily Young, David Williams, and Rod Harrell, and Throat Wobbler Mangrove. Produced and engineered by Joe Zod. Written and directed by Marshall Northrup, with overt political sentiments by Byron Scott Thatcher III. Listen to that.